Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to be talking all about layers and how to keep them organized. I find a lot of people do not take adequate control over their layers in their document, and this ends up causing lots of wasted time and frustration. Let's take a look at some of the powerful features built into the Layers panel or the Layers palette, depending upon which version of Photoshop you're using. Here's how. Now, I've got a multi-layered document open, and you can really use any document you want, but you can download this one from our website at rastervector.com. What I'm going to do here is turn on the first two layers, a left foot and a right foot. Now, this document is not for anything other than teaching purposes. Please do not judge my design skills. We've purposely built things here just to really illustrate a couple of key points about how layers work. Now, you'll see these layers are color-coded, and you can access that color coding by option clicking, and you see that you actually have a color-coded list you could choose from. You can use those colors for organization purposes. You might use one color to indicate a layer contains a stock photo that you have to pay royalties on, or that the document layer hasn't been reviewed yet by the client, or maybe it's just a placeholder image. You can use those colors however you want to help you stay organized. It's also important to note that we've named the layers. You could do that with the same option or alt double click, or just double click on the name itself and you can modify it. Layer 22 copy isn't terribly useful. Something here simple like left foot and right foot makes it perfectly clear what we're choosing. Now, if you're working and you like to have bigger thumbnails, just click on the layers panel up top in the little drop down menu and you could choose panel options. From there, you could choose here a larger thumbnail and it'll give you a bigger preview. Now, for those of you who like Easter eggs, those are those little hidden things you'll sometimes find inside of software programs or DVDs, there's one here too. Simply hold down the Option or the Alt key when you choose Panel Options, and you get Merlin Lives, and you could choose Be Gone. Now, that was total trivia and a complete aside moment, but welcome to the club. You're now part of the secret Photoshop club that knows where Merlin lives. Now, we've got two layers here, the right foot and the left foot. I'm going to go ahead and shift click to select both of them and then grab my move tool. Keyboard shortcut for move is V. Once you've done that, you'll see the options bar gives you several choices, including the ability to align these objects based upon their bottom edge or actually align the horizontal subjects. Once I've got that, that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and press Command or Control G to group those into a new layer. And you see that they're in a folder here called a group. Now, groups are great for organization purposes. It makes it easy to move things around as well as turn them off with a single visibility switch. You can also take these groups and rename them. Let's call these feet. And then we can select the group layer for feet and the background layer, just a command click. And we can actually position that on the page top to bottom centered. That worked great. Let's go ahead and turn that layer off and come up here to our four seasons. Now, one thing that I see people doing all the time is click, click, click. No need to. With the Layers panel, you can just click once, hold down the mouse button and drag straight up, and toggle switches. And notice how easy that was to turn all four on. The Layers panel is really all about efficiency, and you'll find lots of cool things like that built in. Let's go ahead and select those layers. We'll just shift click to select all four layers, grab our Move tool, and we're going to say Align horizontally along the bottom edge. Now that's great, but the layers are not evenly distributed. When you have more than two layers, you could distribute them based upon the horizontal centers in the image. That means if you had three people and you wanted to spread them out so they're equidistant, it would do it based upon the center point of that person. So here we go. Let's distribute these horizontally based upon the center. And you see we have it. Now, the distance between this point and this point appears greater than here to here, but if we were to measure from the center of this object, to the center of this object, it would be the same as the distance from here to here. And that's how distribution works. Great way to get an even balanced image. Again, we could press Command or Control G to group those, and let's just call that Seasons. And we could select the background page there, a quick Command click, and align that to the page as such if we wanted to. Now, layers can also protect yourself. If you want to take a layer and make sure that you can't modify it, there are locks. Now let's just turn this next layer on and you'll see it has a couple of locks enabled. Currently, we've locked the transparent pixels, which means I cannot paint outside of the object. 
we've also locked the position of the layer. So if I try to move this, it beeps and tells me it can't because it's locked. If I grab a paintbrush and try to paint outside, it tells me that nothing can happen here. Notice as I try to paint, the transparent pixels are not modified. So let's go ahead here, just load up a quick color. And we'll go ahead and paint on the key, and you'll see that the paint is constrained to just the opaque areas of the pixel. There we go. And that works great. If you wanted no change, you could lock all the pixels. And then when you try to paint, you'll see that it's blocked out with the no symbol indicating that the layer cannot be modified. So layers can easily be protected so they can't be moved or modified by using those locks at the top. Let's go ahead and turn that off for a second and go to our next layer here. And it's a ribbon with a texture above it. Now, one cool thing we could do is actually tell the contents of one layer to only apply to the layer beneath them. To do that, you simply choose Layer, Create Clipping Mask. You'll see the layer indents, and it's only applied to the opaque pixels down below. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, this might be called Group with Previous. Either way, Group with Previous or Create Clipping Mask, this is a cool technique. It takes the contents of one layer above, and then only applies it to the opaque parts below. All transparency is respected, so this is a great way to constrain some layers so they interact with each other all together. And there's lots more with layers, things like blending modes and all sorts of great stuff we can do. We'll explore those more in an upcoming episode. What I wanted you to feel comfortable with is how to take control of your layers panel, using things like alignment, color coding, custom names, opacity, all of that is built in. Remember, easy controls, and if you look across the top, that's where you can easily tweak things like the opacity if you need to knock a layer down. We can always change the stacking order of layers by dragging, and of course, organize those by grouping them into sets. And let's just call that one ribbon. It's extremely important that you take precise control of your layers. After all, it's your layers and your design. Making sure you have control over them ensures you get the results that you need. My name is Rich Harrington. Be sure to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com. And of course, join us next week. We're going to be talking more about layered images and we'll tackle panoramic photos. Thanks again.